Dr. Richard Eby was a nationally recognized physician, gynecologist, and professor with a very successful practice. In the year of 1972, he was 60 years old. When he was coming down to the second floor from the attic with a box of debris that he had collected, he dashed out and leaned against the railing, which was unknown to him, had been eaten away by termites. With his weight, and of the box, the railing gave way. He plunged headfirst two stories down onto the edge of the concrete sidewalk. His head hit the concrete suddenly. It resulted in complete dislocation and separation of the two halves of the skull, it caused the large blood vessel that carries the blood from the brain to the heart to rupture. His body hanging upside down, with a leg hanging on a bush, caused all the blood to drain from the body. By the time the paramedics got there, it was a bloodless body, hanging by the heels on the bush. As far as the paramedics were concerned, this was a corpse to take to the hospital for certification of death. Right when Dr. Eby hit the cement, with no time in between, he was in a place he had never been before. He was in a place saturated with love, authority, peace, goodness and grace. He knew instinctively that was heaven. That is all he knew the moment he landed. He looked to see where he had landed, and it was absolutely perfect. Not a flower with a broken petal, just perfect. He had landed in a place that he was immediately able to name, it was paradise. Because instantly, he felt the presence of Jesus. It was a place of release from all the physical difficulties that the body or mind can register. He heard himself saying, without having any ability to compose the thought, you are dead. The voice seemingly came out from him and he heard it as if he had spoken it, but it was not his voice. It was the voice of the Lord. It is mind to mind. You can think so fast that it cannot be computed. It is the same mind that Christ has. Dr. Richard Eby's spiritual body was of the same size and shape. The difference was that he was in his spirit body. His spirit was transparent, like clear glass. When he looked to the side his spirit body would take on an opacity, but at the same time, he could see right through it. It had no weight and none of the senses that register pain, fright or discomfort. There were no bones, ligaments, tissues or organs. His mind operated very different from his mind here on earth. When Jesus wanted to say something, he knew it immediately in his mind. If he asked a question, it seemed as if Jesus had answered it before he finished the question. Dr. Eby asked Jesus, why he would not talk to him in English. Jesus answered him that for two reasons. 1. All languages on earth is a result of a curse, therefore he would not speak with him in heaven in a cursed language. And mainly, because Satan cannot tune in, in the heavenly language. It is mind to mind and there are no errors. They moved along in heaven, as if they were flying. Because they have no weight, they simply went as they wished, without ever touching the ground. Dr. Eby asked, God where am I? God said, didn't you read my book? And God asked him that questions the entire time they were together, until Dr. Eby got irritated and he asked him why does he asks him, why did you not read my book? God answered him that he has put in his book everything that anyone will ever need to know. God said, it is all there, whether we found it or not. Dr. Eby had a music background. He believes for that reason. God gave him the ability to hear the wonderful music in heaven. He describes music in heaven, with no similarity in sound or form to the music on earth, where it is limited to airwaves. Up there the music flows so beautifully, and has an unlimited vibration. It is of an entirely different level of hearing, because we do not hear it through ears. Instead, we hear it directly on our minds. Dr. Eby asked Jesus from where the music was flowing. Jesus answered him, that he had created everything, out of him there is nothing. Therefore, the music originates from him and came out of the throne of God. While in heaven, he also smelled perfume. The sweet smelling Savior. Jesus reminded him of the scriptures that the perfume is the prayer of the saints plus Jesus himself, the sweet smelling Savior, which the Bible refers to in many scriptures. He asked Jesus about his transparent body, with no organs. Jesus told him that our bodies in heaven is like the angels. Eternal. There are no organs because organs die. God told men to replenish the earth, not the heavens. 
because in heaven everything is created or reborn. He questioned Jesus why he was alone in that beautiful paradise. Jesus answered him that we all have our own individual paradise, as he promised he would go and prepare a place for us. At one moment, God told him to run down to a valley. Suddenly at the end of his run, looking at beautiful flowers and trees, with fantastic light, surrounded by the music of heaven, suddenly everything went dark. That was the transition of him coming back to life. Dr. Eby describes his comeback to life as total misery. The first sensation he had several hours after his death, was total agony, so much worse than what our human sensory system can stand that we go into shock. Interestingly he was not feeling with his mind. However, he could sense every cell in his body. And every cell was screaming in torment from his toe to his head. Total agony that lasted for about two seconds. With the mind of Christ in him, he asked Jesus why he felt such a pain. Jesus answered him that it is in the book. Jesus was slain before the foundation of the earth to bear everyone iniquities, agonies, pain and sorrow. Jesus said to him, There are billions of cells in my body and I have had pain in every single cell. You have now been totally aware of every individual cell as I am, in my body. And Jesus commanded him to tell everyone that he died for everyone either they believe or not. When Dr. Eby came back to life, he was not healed completely. It was after 18 hours that he had a conscience of his own, being able to detect he had been in a bad accident. God gave him enough to know that anything that came afterwards was God's power in his life, not his. Then, it took him several weeks to get over the initial trauma. Pretty much everything in his body was damaged. Within the first hour that he had come back to life, the Lord came to him in the room and gave him spiritual eyes that allowed him to see his corpse lying on the bed with no blood. Then Lord audibly spoke saying, My son I have returned to give you the answer to my promise that I gave you during the night. With your hands you will heal and my peace will give unto you. Now, Dr. Eby learned several months later, that while he was in heaven with God, God was hearing voices. Voices that he was not aware of, prayer, intercessory voices that was coming from Chicago, from about seven or eight women from prayer lines. That was created because a little girl, that saw when Dr. Eby fell from the balcony and heard the sound of him hitting the concrete. And quickly called her pastor, asking to get his prayer line going and any others that he knew too. As a result, several women got on their knees and told the Lord, we accepted you as Savior, as Lord, as Master, as our Creator. We also learned from your book that you are the Resurrector and we have never seen that happen. Now we just heard of a body in the morgue of a hospital. We are going to keep working today on our housework, but at 9 a.m. tomorrow we are going to call the hospital. Sure enough, the hospital received those calls 18 hours after Drivebe had fallen and died. They asked what happened, and they were told, they do not know what happened, but suddenly around 6.30 that morning, the body had come alive. Five years later, he learned the reason why God had given him that amazing experience in heaven. When he met the other side, hell. For five years, Dr. Eby lived in a great lack of peace because he was not able to share that amazing experience he had had in heaven. And one day, he was visiting Israel. While he was in Lazarus' tomb, he had another experience. When he was in the tomb with two more women, a dim light went off and a total darkness. Dr. Eby turned to the women and told them to just pray and praise, but they were gone and simultaneously he was in his spirit body. The tomb was filled with God's glory. He saw himself on his hands and knees trying to find the way out. But he saw on the side a man standing next to him, which he knew it was Jesus. He immediately jumped to his feet. And Jesus grabbed him by the arms and embraced him with pure love. He could feel Jesus' physical body, the same body that Jesus walked on earth for forty days. All at once, he was permeated with God's love and peace. He looked into Jesus' eyes that cannot be described. They just go right through you with love. And Jesus said, I brought you here to show you things and to tell you others. I know your prayers for five years. I refuse to let you go out to speak until I showed you hell. Jesus said, My son, this is the last generation. I am returning soon. My son, 
Tell them about heaven and hell. I am going to take you to hell as if you were an unsafe sinner, you will not be able to see me but you can ask me questions. Dr. Eby found himself immediately in the center of the earth, stopping on a solid rock. There was a hole in this solid rock about 6 feet high and 3.5 square. He looked down and saw a thousand little demons, the size of house spiders and a few larger ones on his feet. It was an indescribable bad smell. They were all cursing him and telling him that they finally won, he would stay there forever. Dr. Eby could not describe the feeling of being completely isolated from the presence of God. However, quickly the Lord took Dr. Eby away from hell and takes him before the white throne. He asked Jesus if he could look into God's eyes to see the love he saw when he was in the tomb in Jerusalem. Jesus told him no. He could only look into God's eyes after his resurrection. He wanted to know what is to be a sinner and not be destroyed. And out of the midst of that huge throne came out a hand holding a book, that said, This is the Lamb's Book of Life. God was looking through the pages with great speed, looking for Dr. Eby's name. Then a voice like thunder said, Your name is not in the Lamb's Book of the Life, therefore you do not belong in the family of God. There is only one other family, and that is the family of Satan, so depart. And the book was closed. All of a sudden Dr. Eby was turned around, looking at a distance, light years away, and there was the lake of fire. Jesus said, that is the lake of fire that is where death and hell will be incinerated. That moment Dr. Eby could feel total hopelessness, knowing that his faith was sealed forever. Suddenly Dr. Eby is back in the tomb, the lights are back, he looked around, and there were the two women. They had not gone anywhere. This amazing experience ended with Jesus' words, Tell them, tell them for I am coming soon. This is the last generation. That was the summary of Dr. Ebby's testimony. I'm asking you today. Your name is listed on the Book of the Life of the Lamb. If you are a Christian, your name is not automatically listed over there. If you get baptized, your name is not listed over there. If you attend church, your name is not listed over there. Two conditions required to be listed on the Lamb's Book of the Life. First, you have to repent your sins. Repentance is not only regret. You have to turn away from your sins. Our bodies still live a not perfect world. So continue repent whenever you sin. Two, you have to believe in Jesus as your Savior who died for your sins. Not simply accept this. You have to believe this with wholeheartedly. You should truly love Him with all your heart. I'd like to talk one more thing here. Dr. Ebby passed away on December 26, 2002. I believe that he went to heaven. Even though his name was not listed before, he repented and truly believed Jesus as his Savior later on. So his name was listed later on. On the dying bed, Jesus appeared to him. Jesus said, Tell them, tell them, tell them, I am coming soon. When Jesus said three times, that means that's important. Dr. Ebby asked him back how soon. Jesus answered, use yourself as example. December 26, 2014 is 12 years after he died. The day of his death is related to the day of Jesus coming? I leave it up to you. One thing I'm sure is that Jesus is coming back surely soon. So be ready for his coming.